Hey, what's up? Pastor Kevin here. Thank you so much for joining us right here at the church at Visalia and the church online. Uh, today we are starting a brand new series called Life Lessons from Father Abraham. And so whether you've been raised in church your whole life, or maybe you're kind of new to this church thing, or maybe even really never even opened the Bible, most likely you've heard of this guy named Abraham. Well, today we are going to start a two week journey looking at the pages of scripture, reading about the life of this man named Abraham in hopes that maybe we could learn a few things on what to do and what not to do in our life today. The Bible is an incredible book and it's not just about things that happened a long time ago. God inspired the pages of scripture to be written so that we could live our life to its fullest right now and i'm really excited about the topic we're going to be discussing today now before we get into the message um, let me just thank you for being so faithful in uh, sharing these messages with your friends and family through text message through social media we are getting more and more and more views and downloads every single week so thank you for watching and thank you for sharing these with your friends also thank you for your faithfulness and giving there's so many of you that are staying faithful in this time of transition and thank you for doing so because you're not only allowing us to preach the gospel now you are setting a foundation for as we begin to to go into the future that god has for us we will be ready to step into it in fullness and in strength and so thank you for giving if you would like to give today to the mission and the vision of the church to help make disciples bring people to jesus and help them live like him you can do so by just following the prompts that are on the uh, popping up on the screen you can give via uh, uh, um, our website you can give um, through texting you also can give through sending your check into our p.o box number and however you give thank you thank you so much Listen, we've got a great topic that we're going to be discussing today. But before we jump into the message, let's bow our heads and pray and spend just a few moments preparing our hearts through worship to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to come to you today. And Lord, we thank you for the pages of Scripture. We thank you for the stories of the Bible, that they're not just about stories from a long time ago. They are our story, and there's things that we can learn and we ask in Jesus' name that we would learn this today, we would we, hear from your Holy Spirit, and whether we have been walking with you for a long time, we're new in our walk with Jesus, or maybe we're still kind of searching at what faith is actually like, Lord, I pray that you would meet us today. In Jesus' name, amen. That is who you are. You 
are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship. Turning lives around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you, waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yeah, sing it again. Waymaker, miracle worker. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. For the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You're the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us today right here at the Church Online. Really excited about this new series that we're doing called Life Lessons from Father Abraham. Now, let me just give you a little bit of backstory about this guy by the name of Abraham. Abraham is one of the foundational characters, real life characters, not a fictional character. He's one of the foundational characters in all of Scripture. Abraham lived a life that was full of faith. He's the father of faith, but that doesn't mean that his life was perfect. He made a lot of mistakes on his journey in life and on his journey in putting faith in God. And what we want to do over the next few weeks is look at Abraham's life and learn from a couple of the mistakes that he and his family made. Not to point fingers at Abraham and say, man, what a loser, man, that guy's crazy, man, that guy dropped the ball. No, not to point a finger at Abraham, but, but to look at errors that he made in hopes that we don't make the same ones in our life. So today we're talking about life lessons from Father Abraham. Now, now let me just let me just forewarn you. I guess uh, today's message is not so much a message or a preaching. I'm not going to get my preach on Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach uh, so much today. As what I just want to have a Bible study with you. We're going to read the text, and we're going to I'm going to explain it a little bit. Uh, and look at how it applies to our life, and then I'm going to throw out a series of questions to you so that you and your family and your friends can kind of dive into this text and this story and see how it applies to you. 
So today, as we look at the story of Abraham, we're going to start off in Genesis chapter 11. In fact, it's Genesis 11, starting at verse number 20, uh, verse number 27. And this is what it says. This is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram. Now, let me stop there. Abram is actually Abraham. Later on, as Abram starts to follow God, God changes his name from Abram to Abraham. And, but at this point in his life, his, his name, he's known as Abram. And Terah is Abram's father. So here we go. This is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Horan. Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. So we'll stop there. What's happening is, is there's a man by the name of Terah. Terah has three sons. Uh, he has a son named Abram. He has a son named Nahor. And he has a son named Haran. Haran is married and he has a son by the name of Lot. They are living in this area known as Ur of the Chaldeans. And while they are living their life, unfortunately, Terah loses his son, Haran. His son, Haran, dies and passes away while they're living in Ur. It says that Abram, that's the other brother, and, and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and, and Ishka. Now, Sarah was barren and had no children. Now, if you notice there, the lady that, that, that Abram is married to, her name is Sarai. And again, as Abram and Sarai begin to journey in their walk with God, God changes their name to Abraham to Sarah. And the reason that he does this is he, he, he's, adding, he's adding his breath. He's kind of, it's a longer story, but he's at, I don't want to sidetrack on, but he's adding his breath, he's adding his name to their name, from Abram to Abraham, to, from Sarai to Sarah. And he's adding himself into their name. But that's why you see the difference of Abram and Sarai. But they're, they're the same characters here, okay? Same people. And so Abram gets married, Nahor gets married, and now the story continues. Terah, the father, took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of the son of Abraham, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, that's the name of a city, they settled there, and Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. Now, so what happens here is, is Terah, the father, meets with Abram, meets with Sarai, meets with Lot, and whether Terah was the one who decided to go or Abram was the one who decided to go, we're not sure, but it says that Terah took his family he took Abram and his family with Sarai, his wife, and their nephew Lot, whose father, Haran, had passed away, and they start off to go to Canaan. Now, if you're looking at a map, Ur of the Chaldeans is here, and Canaan would be over here. Canaan is in, is in the area of what is now known as Jerusalem and, and Israel, and it's close to the sea. Ur of the Chaldeans was a little bit more over towards what is now known as Iran. And so Terah and his Abraham and their family, they are going to go from, they're trying to go, they feel like they're supposed to go from Ur of the Chaldeans over to Canaan. But as they're traveling, they don't travel straight across, they begin to travel up and around. And as they go up, they get to this one city and they keep going, a second city and they keep going, a third city and they keep going, and then they land at a city named Haran. And scripture says that when they get to Haran, they settle. They settle there. And I think that is such a powerful word. 
What happens is, is they're supposed to go where? They're not supposed to go to Haran. They're supposed to go to Canaan. But they settle for Haran. And they stay there for the rest of Terah's life. In fact, he dies there in Haran. And he never actually goes to Canaan. This is such... Oh, this is such a stirring story to me. I read it this week and I was like, man, there's something about this story that we can learn from. Terah and Abraham were on their way to Canaan and they settled for a city along the way. Why? Why, 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 why did they stop? Why did... Why did Abraham and Terah stop at Haran when they should have went on to Canaan. Now, Scripture, as we read it in that passage as well as other passages where this, this story is mentioned, we don't from Scripture all the way know for sure the reason why Terah and Abraham stopped at Haran and did not continue on to where they were supposed to go at that point named Canaan. One of the reasons that some, some philosophers, some theologians, some historians would believe. There, there's kind of three kind of theories out there of why Terah and Abraham stopped there at, at Haran instead of going on to Canaan. One of them is, is that his son Haran had died back in Ur of the Chaldeans. And Terah, losing his son, by the time they get to a city that just so happens to be named the same name as his son, he's still mourning over the loss of his son. He's hurting from things that happened in the past. And those past hurts kept him from moving forward into going into Canaan. He couldn't handle the pain. He was mourning still, so he just settled where he was and he didn't move on. That, that's one kind of theory. Another theory is, is that, um, this isn't a theory, but that, that, that Terah actually was worshiping other gods. He was an idol worshiper. He did not know Jehovah God at this time. and he, In fact, he never knew Jehovah God. He died before he did. But Terah was worshiping other gods. And as he's worshiping other gods, some people believe that because he had idols in his heart, because he had never listened to or searched for the one true God, God could not allow, God would not allow Abraham to move into the promised land of Canaan, move into the things that he had for him because Terah had idols in his heart. And then once Terah passed away, God spoke to Abram, whose heart was more soft, and God spoke to Abram and said, go to Canaan, go to the promised land. And then Abram goes on to his new journey. So one, one theory is, is that they didn't move on because Terah was, was dealing with thing, hurts from the past. Another theory is, is that he had idols in his heart that he was not willing to get rid of and he could not move on to God's future because he was still holding on to the idols of his past. And the third theory would be, or idea that that's out there, is that Terah was actually, he, he, his business was he made idols. He formed idols and he sold them for religious purposes and communities. And whenever he got to Haran, there was good business there. And they're making money. And life is good. And life is kind of soft. And they're enjoying Haran. So why move on to Canaan, get back out in the desert, lose our business ventures. Let's just stay right where we are because life is good. And that's kind of the three theories that are out there of why they settled for Haran and did not move on to Canaan at that point. Now, after, now you'll read on in, in chapter 12, it quickly turns that after Terah dies, God appears to Abram and says, Leave your father's family, leave you where you're from, and go to the land in which I'm going to show you. But why is it that they settled there? Was it because of hurts of the past? Was it because of gods that they had placed in their heart that they couldn't let go of? Was it because life was good and business is nice and why move on when we could just settle here and have a pretty good life? Let's don't go to Canaan. Let's don't push it farther. Let's just settle 
and have a good life. This resonates so much with me. And I think it might resonate with you if we turn the page now and we take our eyes off of Terah and Abraham's story and we put those same things into our life today. Whenever I look at the story of Terah leading his family and Abram following his father, there's some things that come to my mind. So, so stick with me. Again, I'm not really getting my preach on today. I just, I just want to talk about this text and throw it out there to you and let's see what the Holy Spirit does in your heart. But as I look at this, I see that all of us as, as individuals, God has a lifestyle that He wants us as His creation to live. There is a way that God says is the right way to live our life. There are principles that God wants us to live by when it comes to this is how God wants us to live when it comes to our relationship with our spouse. This is the way God wants us to live as it pertains to how we handle our finances. This is the way God wants us to live as it pertains to the relationships that we have with other people or how we interact in the workplace or in the marketplace. There is a Canaan that God wants us to go to as it pertains to how we live our life. And many times as we are living our life, trying to get to where God wants us to be in our marriage, trying to get to where God wants to be in our heart, trying to get to where God wants us to, how God wants us to live in our finances or in our sexual lifestyles or in our relationships around us. As we're on our way trying to get to where God wants us to go, many times we settle. And we don't quite get there. We don't quite live how God said to live. And the reasons sometimes are the same reasons that Terah might have stopped at Haran. Sometimes it's the hurts of our past. And because of things that happened to us or because of things that we did to ourselves or to others, we can't forgive ourselves. And we carry around the burden of non-forgiveness of our own heart. And that keeps us from being free to live as God wants us to live. Sometimes we are carrying around the hurts of past of things that have been done to us. Sometimes it's the things that we have lost and we can't let go of it. And because we can't let go of it, we don't trust God fully because we don't trust God fully. We don't continue to walk in the lifestyle in which he wants us to leave, live and we settle for something far less than what God wants for us. Possibly we settle in our personal lives because of life is good. Life is easy. Business is nice. My marriage is fine. I don't really have anything bad happening to me. Why should I strive to improve? Why should I strive to live His way when the way I'm living actually feels pretty good? I'll just keep doing what I'm doing with my friends, keep doing what I'm doing in my heart, keep doing what I'm doing in my life because it actually seems to be working pretty good. So instead of moving forward towards holiness, we stay living a life that's culturally relevant or a life that's easy because it's easy. And sometimes we don't move on to live how God wants us to live because we have idols in our heart. And God wants us to live a certain way in our sexuality, but we have placed a God in our life as it pertains to how we want to act out our sexuality. And I will not move on from this because to what God wants me to have because I actually love this. We put gods in our life of material possessions, gods in our life of sexual expressions, gods in our life of, of, of work and of family and of friends and of ourself and what me, myself, and I. And that keeps us from being humble and surrendering and just trusting God and living fully the way He says to live. God has a Canaan for us in our lifestyle. And many times we settle because of idols in our heart, because life is fairly easy, or because past hurts have not been forgiven or forgotten. Also, it resonates with me because not only does God have a Canaan for us in our personal lifestyle, God has a Canaan for us in our calling. Scripture says in Ephesians, it says, for, for 
It is by grace you have been saved through faith. It's a gift of God, not of work, so that no man can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works before the world began. There are good works that God has preordained for us to do. There's a call that God has on our life. There's a thing that God created us for, and he that's our Canaan, and God wants us to accomplish this. God wants us to be salt. God wants us to be light. God wants us to possibly start that business. God wants us to make that hire. God wants us to start a ministry. God wants us to have friends at our house and, and, have, and, and invite them to worship in our home. God wants us to do certain good things, and many times, instead of moving on to the Canaan that God has the call that he's placed on our life, we settle for our Haran because of past hurts. I tried before and it didn't work. I tried before and that relationship died. I tried before. If I do this, I'm going to, to bring up things that happened in the past and I can't do that. So I'm just going to settle for where I am. Sometimes it's past hurt. Sometimes it's because life is good. Why, why change and start doing this? Why, 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 why drop this and move on to this? Why hold on to this and, and fight for it? God, life's pretty easy right now. Why, why should I have people to my home? Life's pretty easy right now. Why should I press on to start that thing? Life's pretty good. Just settle. And sometimes it's because of idols in our heart. We can't do the thing that God's called us to do because we're too busy watching our favorite sports team. We can't do what God wants us to do because we're too busy trying to please our family. We can't do what God's called us to do because we're too busy buying the things we want to buy and now we can't afford to sow into the kingdom of God the way God wants us to because we're giving all of our money to the bank because of the car we just bought. You see, God has a call for your life. But many times we settle in Haran because of idols in our heart. We settle because of past hurts or we settle because, man, you know what? Life's pretty good. Why press on? This is what Paul says. I love his words. Forgetting those things which are behind me, I press on to the high calling of Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? Forgetting the Ur of the Chaldeans, forgetting the things that I've lost, Forgetting the things that were done to me. Forgetting the fact that life was good yesterday. Forgetting the fact that, man, that, that this is what I used to do. I'm going to forget all those things. And I want to press on to the what calling? To the high calling. Not the mediocre calling. The high calling. Of who? Of me? No. Of my friends? No. The high calling of what culture says? No. I'm going to forget the things of my past and I'm going to press on to the high calling, not the mediocre calling, but the high calling of Christ Jesus, Christ the Messiah, Christ the one who died on the cross and rose from the dead and forgave me of my sins and placed a call on my life and wants me to live a certain way. I'm going to push forward to what he has for me and I'm not going to settle. I'm going to Canaan. I'm going to live the life that God says I should live. I'm going to do the thing that God's created me to do. Because it's the high thing that God has for me and not the mediocre thing that I have for myself. There's so many lessons that we can learn from Father Abraham. Today what I want to do is, is we want to throw out a few questions to you before we before we wrap this up. Now, here's, here's a series of questions. I'm, I'm going to throw these questions out to you. I want you to take a few minutes, hit the pause button if you need to, and then be sure to come back because we're going to wrap things up and we've got some announcements that we're going to be making about where we are and then some things that are happening. So, so stick around after this the, the, your Q&A time. But here's some questions I want to throw your way. They're going to come up on the screen. What is something in your personal life that God has asked you to do? What is something in your personal life that God has asked you to do? Have you settled? If so, why? Have you kept going and pursuing it? If so, why? What is something 
in your personal life that God has asked you to do, have you settled or have you kept going? The second question is, what is a call? What is an idea? What is a plan that God has given you? Have you settled or have you kept going for it? And why? And here's the last question. With what you have heard today about the story of Abraham, what is one thing that you are either going to stop doing, start doing, or change this week? What, 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 what's something that you're going to start? What's something you're going to stop? Or maybe there's something you need to change this week. Take a few minutes. Think about these questions, discuss them together if you're with family and friends, and then come back and we're going to wrap things up. Well, today as we wrap up, I, I want us to remember this lesson from Father Abraham. Don't settle. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Don't settle. Don't settle in your personal lifestyle for living the way they think you should live, you think you should live. Press on to Canaan and live the lifestyle that lines up with God's Word. Trust God enough to keep going in your lifestyle and the way that you live. Don't settle for the call that God's placed on your life, for idea that He has given you, the plan that He's placed in front of you. Don't settle. Keep pressing on. Forget those things which are behind you and press on to the high calling, not the mediocre calling, the high calling of Christ Jesus. God has a Canaan for you. It's not going to be easy to get there. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And as you're going to see in the story of Abraham, it's going to be winding roads all along the way. But oh, God's going to make a difference through you if you don't settle. Thanks for joining us today. And hey, before we let you go, let me bring you up to speed on where you, we are on our pastoral search right here at the church. As you know, or most probably know, is we are in a really huge series of transition. Not only is, is culture shifting because of COVID and what we can or can't do legally or whatever um, because of COVID restrictions, we as a church are shifting because of transitions in leadership. Um, many many of, of, of our staff members have moved on to God's call for their life, which is great, and we celebrate that. My wife, Veronica, and I, we are stepping into a season of 
planting churches and starting a network here in Noble County, continuing to work at the church. I'm still the teaching pastor at the church. I'm still on the board at the church. I'm still walking alongside of us, doing it from a distance, but I'm still here while God has called me to step into this new season. So because of that, we are looking for a new senior pastor, a local senior pastor for the church at Visalia. And where we are is this. We have four candidates that have reached out to us. We have contacted them and we are starting a series of meetings with them. So here's what I want you to be doing. I want you to continue to pray. Continue to pray that God would guide us for our senior pastor to take us to the Canaan that he has, that God has for us. Can you begin and continue to pray? Number two is stay faithful. Stay faithful in watching. Stay faithful in gathering in your home. Stay faithful in giving. Stay faithful. This is your church. It's not my church. It's not the elders' church. It's our church. It's your church. So stay faithful. Keep praying. Stay faithful. And then let's watch God be God. So this next week, we've got some different Zoom meetings we're going to be doing with, with candidates and talking with them. So be praying. We're going to keep you in the loop on what's happening. If you've got any questions, drop me an email at growmore at gmail.com, and I would love to connect with you. God is up to something big in your life. God is up to something big in our church. God is up to something big in our world, and we, as the body of Christ, get to be a part of it. So keep praying, stay faithful, and let's watch God do what He does best. And that's shine a bright light. God bless. And hey, we'll talk to you soon.